telling me that the king of a third world country runs around in a bulletproof cat suit? How much more are you hiding? Where it really feels satisfying is when I, when, I, when I go to see a Black Panther movie and I think about Priest and how much of that stuff that's on the screen did not exist before his crazy brain got to that stuff. It was really surreal to see characters running around that I created. I still can hardly believe it. The Black Panther has become a major player in pop culture, thanks in large part to the enormously successful MCU movie of the same name. So much so that Black Panther 2 is already in the works. The original, however, was the King of Wakanda's coming out party. All of the elements of that film came together incredibly well. The soundtrack, the kingdom of Wakanda itself and the world building around it, and how it brought all of its various comic book influences to the big screen. Director Ryan Coogler has gone on record saying that Christopher Priest's acclaimed Black Panther run influenced much of his movie. Okoye, the Dora Milaje, Everett Ross, they all came from Priest's stories back in 1998. Not bad considering Black Panther wasn't even Priest's first choice when Marvel Knights' Joe Quesada reached out. When he started making noise about, about the Marvel Knights project, I thought, well, hey, here's my chance to write Daredevil. You know, um, I've always wanted to write Daredevil. I still want to write Daredevil. When he said Black Panther, I was like, who? I was so focused on Daredevil that it took me a while to hear him when he said Black Panther. And I had no interest in writing Black Panther. Black, Black, pa Black Panther? Priest had a point. The Panther had been mishandled by Marvel for years. Up until that point, the last time Black Panther was relevant was during Don McGregor's jungle action run in the 1970s. Not only had he become an obscure name, he'd also become a character who was sort of boring. So I, I turned him down. Then I got this call from Mark Wade. What are you doing? What are you doing? You gotta do this. And I was like, what are you talking about? No, it's gonna be great. No, they've, they've got this whole idea, you know? And then I get a call from Brian Augustine, who was an editor at uh, DC at the time. You know, and, and Brian is like, you know, Jim, you gotta, you know, you gotta look into this. Priest decided he would only do it if he were able to portray the Panther the way he wanted to. So I thought about it, and then I called, uh, I had the second conversation with Joe and Jimmy, and I laid down this, 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 this manifesto. He's gotta be smarter than the other guys. He's gotta be tougher than the other guys. Gotta have technology. You know, and I laid out these basic tent poles uh, of the character as I saw him. We have to go back to Stan. My reference is Stan. You know, with all due respect to Don and Roy and all these guys that wrote him, I'm going back to the guy who created him. And you read that first Black Panther story, he was what? He was smart. He was rich. He was technologically advanced. He outsmarted the Fantastic Four. He didn't just outsmart yeah. them. He beat he them. Beat him. He beat them single-handedly and then laughed at them. <laughs> you know? I want to write that guy because that's my understanding of the character. Now, what I want to do is take Stan's Black Panther and update him for the 90s and make him a little darker and a little bit more like Batman. And I said, and oh yeah, I want it to be funny because Black Panther had never been funny before. Ever. <laughs> Ever been funny. <laughs> so I went off and I wrote the very first script and I submitted, uh, we talked about the story and blah, blah, blah. And I sent the first script in and they rejected it. They said, this is terrible. No, you can't do that. And I still have that script somewhere. I should put it on my website somewhere. Uh, the problem with the first script is that I wrote it in a very straightforward, traditional way. And he said, no, 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 we want you to write it in that Pulp Fiction and Rewind, that stuff you do with Quantum and Woody with the chapter headings and, and everything is sort of out of sequence, you know, they insisted that I do that. Palmiotti and Casada still felt the story was missing something, or actually, someone. The big difference was there was no Everett K. Ross. And we, you know, because uh, uh, Jim, I'm trying to remember, uh, forgive me and Jim, forgive me if, if, if I'm mixing up who had what idea or whatever. So, so, because it, to me it's all collaborative. But, um, I believe Jim's first take was Panther in Wakanda, right? And and what I was pitching to Jim was, let's bring him here. Let's do Coming to America. Do the fish out of water thing. We had in our brain the Coming to America thing, where Black Panther's a king coming to America. You know, it was a very simple idea. When we hired Tex, he gave us some design drawings, and he drew this Black Panther one you see on the cover, the number one, and we were like, whoa. You know, he took what Kirby did and made it more modern, and it was just... One of those books that once you saw it, you were like, yeah, this is a major character. You put those people in the streets of New York and it's just like, what the hell, right? But more importantly, Priest and I talked about this. You know, we, we had, for the most part, a majority 
uh, 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 white audience. So, so how do we bring them along for this ride? And that's where Everett K. Ross came in. Everett K. Ross is a priest original who was portrayed in the Black Panther film by Martin Freeman. He's the narrator of that story, and, and he's sort of our kitty pride because he walks you through this world. The now classic opening splash page in issue one let the reader know immediately this was not going to be your typical Black Panther story. It features Everett K. Ross sitting on a toilet, no pants, and gun drawn. And if you're thinking Ross reminds you of someone, you're onto something. For those who go back to read that book, Everett K. Ross, in, our, in Priest's imagination, and then I told Tex and he nailed it, Everett K. Ross, uh, the, the prototype was Michael J. Fox. So if you read that narration with Michael J. Fox's voice, it becomes 10 times funnier. And there are moments where text draws it, I'm like, oh, it looks a little like Michael J. Fox. <laughs> you know? But that's who, that's who Ross was supposed to be. Artist Mark Texera also nailed the updated Black Panther look. Mark Texera gave it a very cinematic, moody, dark look. And Black Panther was not only tough, he was very threatening and had a very hard edge to it as well as the humor side, where Everett K. Ross, a Black Panther State Department handler, he sells his soul for a pair of pants. So he's wearing the devil's pants. But it wasn't all sunshine and vibranium. Change can be a tough pill to swallow for comic book fans, who definitely let Priest hear about their discontent. They didn't like the idea that I gave Black Panther the equivalent of an iPhone, this thing called a Kimoyo card, that basically functioned like an iPhone, which had not been invented yet. So I think Steve Jobs owes me a bunch of money. The purists said, you know, that they kept confusing Black Panther with Tarzan. And I had to explain to them, no, no, he's not Kazar, he's not Tarzan, he's Black Panther. Making him bulletproof, we got a lot of grief. We got a lot of grief from him having vibranium heels on his boots, the soles of his boots, and on and on and on and on, you know. So there was some rough sledding there for, for the people who actually were Black Panther fans. For the people who were just coming in reading Black Panther for the first time, 100% positive. Priest's multi-year run on Black Panther fundamentally changed how the character was viewed. As writer Ta-Nehisi Coates noted, Priest was the first comics writer to approach T'Challa as a king, not as a superhero. He introduced key elements to the Panther mythology. Most importantly, he made T'Challa cool. It was a big world that Kirby developed, obviously, for the Marvel Universe. So we just expanded on it. but. We brought it up to date. The idea that Black Panther is a king makes first makes complete sense and is a better it's a better storyline to go with. Who doesn't want to follow a king who dresses up and goes out and tries to level the playing field? These were very grounded characters and that was the tone we set up with Marvel Knights. 20 years later, the Black Panther that Marvel Knights introduced took center stage in the blockbuster Black Panther movie. Confident, regal, and utterly badass he personified the potential in the character. Potential that was finally realized because of Priest Marvel Knights series. It was really surreal to see characters running around that I created. It, it was emotional. I still can hardly believe it. It's extremely flattering. It also tells me that we did something right. We hit a note that had to be hit at the time. You know, right place, right time. Yeah, I mean, watching that Black Panther movie, I was just giggling. This sounds corny. I, I don't look back a lot you know, because there's so much stuff to, to, to get done. Where, where it really feels satisfying is when I, when, I, when I go to see a Black Panther movie and I think about Priest and how much of that stuff that's on the screen did not exist before his crazy brain got to that stuff, you know? And that's where I, I really smile because it, I, I get a sense of pride from seeing guys like that, you know, uh, you know, my guys, you know, my boys. They've created something that now becomes iconic. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. The revolution will not be televised.